Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be making some realistic looking wetlands and swamps for our wargaming table using mostly, as you can see here, faux fur to get a real realistic look to the reeds and the bushes that surround swamps and wetlands. And this will be a nice technique for both sci-fi here. You can see I have a plague marine out here or even historicals too, really. The possibilities for these techniques are endless. So sit back and I will show you how I made this simple wetland here. So the first thing we're going to need is something to base our wetland on. So I'm just using a piece of MDF here, which I cut out and beveled the edges with a hand sander. And then for the top layer of our swamp, we're actually going to cut it out of a piece of foam board here. And you can see I kind of traced out the dimensions of the swamp already. And once I'm happy with the overall shape of what my swamp will look like. I'm just going to bevel the edges of the foam with a sharp knife just to make sure that the foam sits nice and flat against the MDF and we won't have to do too much work to cover up the transition between the two different materials. And once I've beveled the edge, now I actually need to cut out the swamp itself from the foam board. So the look that I'm going for here is based on an English fen or a grassland that's kind of mixed with a wetland where you have small pools and little channels cutting through the grass, which would give this wetland a nice unique look when compared to the other kind of swamp terrain I've done in the past. And so now I'm going to take out my faux fur here. This is grizzly bear fur. It's a brown fur that I got from Joann's. You can find this on sale for only a few bucks a yard. And again, it makes the most realistic grass in my opinion. So I'm just taking the piece of foam board that I've already cut out and I'm just cutting around it with some scissors to give a rough estimate of how much fur I will need in order to cover the entirety of my wetland. And once I have the faux fur cut out, now it is time to do the base layer of paint. And for that, I'm actually going to use different colors of green and yellow spray paint. So I got a dark green here, a more light yellow, lime green. And so I'm just going to spray it on the fur and then I'm going to use a comb to kind of blend the two different colors together. So now I'm just spraying different varying amounts of the lime green and dark green around until I get a realistic uh, base color for my grass and then I'm just going to spray the entire thing with a highlight of bright yellow and then blend that in to the green below it to give a nice transition of color from the roots of the grass down up to the top. And once I've put down that base color down on the faux fur, now I'm going to cut out all of my different channels and waterways that make up my wetland. And so here I just clipped the faux fur to my foam board and I'm using that to trace out all of the areas where I will later pour resin in. So I'm just cutting it out with an X-Acto knife, not worrying about it being too accurate. If you have too much fur overhanging the foam, you can always go back with some scissors and trim it back later. So once we get all of our waterways cut out, now we can finally glue down that foam board to the MDF. So here I'm just using some wood glue, some PVA, and I'm just going to glue it down and to make sure that it dries evenly and doesn't warp, I'm going to put a very heavy book on top of it and I'll give it the rest of the night to dry. Now once the foam board is dry, I'm going to come back the next day in order to clear up any transitions between the foam board and the MDF, I'm going to be covering those seams up with just some air dry clay and I'm also going to use that on the interior section of the waterway, kind of show a steep bank and it actually worked better than I thought. I usually use uh, plaster or even just PVA and sand, but here I was able to kind of mold the shoreline to exactly what I wanted. And then after the clay dried, I went back and I'm going to spray paint all the areas where I'm going to pour the resin, all the waterways, with here this chocolate brown spray paint. It's the camo spray paint from Krylon. It's great stuff just covering all of those waterways, not worrying too much about the banks. And so now I'm gonna do some airbrush work. So I'm going to paint all the kind of middle sections with a darker brown than even this base coat that I've put down. So I'm using black brown by Vallejo. I'm just trying to spray all the middle sections, kind of the deepest sections of this swamp or wetland. And I'm giving it a nice even coat all around the middle and then around the banks of the wetland. First, I'm going to give it a layer of desert sand by Vallejo. 
but I'm going to feel that this is a little bit too light and I want a more green brown tint to the bank. So I decided to go back over it with, in fact, some uh, green brown by Vallejo and I spray that all around the side and that will give it a, the look of a nice transition from shallows to the deeper parts of the wetland. And this is where airbrushes really shine for terrain. You're able to get really nice blends without any hard work. If you were to do this by brush, you'd have to do some uh, wet blending or lots of layers or glazes and that sort of thing. But you can just knock out a nice smooth transition in only a few seconds with an airbrush. And then just to clean up some of the speckling that happens when you airbrush and also to uh, clean up some of the areas where I got a little too overzealous with the green brown, I'm just taking that black brown and spraying it straight down the middle of the waterways to give the illusion of depth and also to help smooth out the transitions between the green and the brown. And once the paint has dried, now we are going to glue down our faux fur to the foam board and MDF. And here I am going to use CA glue to glue this down. I find that using PVA often will just result in your fur turning into a mess because for whatever reason, the faux fur seems to like to absorb PVA up through the fibers and it just clumps all the different hairs together and it doesn't work very well. But using CA glue, especially that gel kind, seems to work well of holding down the fur without absorbing any of it. So here I'm, I'm both gluing down the interior and exterior sections of the fur and giving it a good 5-10 minutes to dry. And then once the glue is dried, I'm going around the edges of the faux fur with scissors and cutting away any areas where there's a great deal of overhang. And then on any sections where there will not be any faux fur, I'm just going to put down some PVA and some very fine grit uh, to simulate our earth. So I'll put that on these islands here and also around the sides of the MDF. And I'm not going to really have much of any dirt showing. Uh, it's going to be either covered in flock or fur. So I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about getting a realistic look to the earth. And now for the fun part. So here are all the colors I'm going to use to paint the faux fur. If you notice, they're mostly greens with a high content of yellow and also a bunch of flesh tones. And this is the new method I use for painting faux fur. I think it's actually far more realistic than the method I showed in my faux fur video. And it will allow your grassland to almost look like no two blades of grass are the same color. It looks amazing. So first things first, I'm going to be putting down all of my green colors onto the fur as a mid-tone between what we spray painted and the flesh tones. The flesh tones I'll be using just as a very high highlight. So here I'm over brushing the grass with a livery green. And once I have that over the tops of grass, I just use a comb to blend it in. Then I'm going to go with kind of a pea green. I think it's a Russian uniform green by Vallejo. And I'm mixing that alongside the livery green and then using the comb to blend the two colors together. Already you can see the grass is looking a lot better than uh, all the stuff we haven't touched yet on either side of that little swatch of grass. And then I'm going to take some uh, dark skin tone by Vallejo and I'm just going to touch several places along the grass with it and then use my comb to blend it into the surrounding grass. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to get some base skin tone, a lighter color skin tone, and I'm going to just touch several spots around the grass with that, blend it in with the brush. And you can go on and on and on with a bunch of different colors and tones here. Again, I'm using yet another color of skin tone, and I am then using the comb to blend it in. And you can get really, really diverse looking grass using this technique. You can even mix in some reds. So here I'm using a dwarf skin tone by Vallejo and again, combing it in. So you just get very subtle variations in the grass and you can spend again as much time as you want and get really, really realistic looking grass with this. So here I'm taking a different color green. All right, I believe this is an olive green and then I am just mixing it in. This process actually goes pretty quickly. You're just using small amounts of paint, just over brushing a little bit onto the fur, switching up colors constantly. I'm not even wiping off my brush as I do this. I'm just letting them all kind of blend together. And this whole process will only take a few minutes, but I think it gives you a much more realistic look than my previous attempts at making grass with faux fur. Now that we're done with the fur, it's just time for the finishing touches. So here I'm painting around the sides of the MDF with just some burnt umber. 
All right, most of this is gonna be put under flock so you won't even notice it, so I'm just doing a quick rough job with the burnt umber. And then doing a little bit of a highlight in case any of it shows through with just some green ochre to give a nice kind of earthy yellow color around the sides of the swamp here. Do make sure when you're putting down that green ochre though that you do wipe off most of your paint and use it as a traditional dry brush or else you can get some weird streaks onto your burnt umber which you of course do not want. And now we're going to flock the edges of the MDF where the MDF and the faux fur meat to kind of hide some of the rough edges. There's some abrupt transitions between the fur and the base. And so I'll be using two fine turfs from Wilden Scenics. I will be using the burnt grass and the earth blend. Both are light greens and yellows that'll mix well with the colors I've chosen for this wetland. So I'm just gonna put down a little bit of PVA around all the edges of that, M where the MDF and the fur meet and I'm just going to be sprinkling on a little bit of that fine turf. And then after that dries, I'm gonna look for any areas where there's still a distinct transition between the base and the faux fur. And there I'm gonna put in coarse turf, light green coarse turf by Woodland Scenics. And I actually think the coarse turf complements the faux fur well. It looks almost like some weeds or shrubs growing up amongst the grasses. I think I want to experiment a little bit more of combining turf and faux fur. I think you could probably get some pretty cool effects out of it. Uh, but anyways, I'm putting this also in the interior of the waterways. Again, anywhere where you can really notice where the fur and the edge of the board are meeting here. You can see there's a little gap there. And I'll just use the coarse turf in there. And, I'll, and when I pour the resin, the resin will cover uh, the coarse turf and so it will look like these are some kind of marine plant life. And once I've finished with the flock, now it's time to pour the resin. I forgot to turn my camera on for the beginning of this, but basically I just took some Envirotex resin and I colored it with some peat brown artist's ink. I just put in two drops into the resin, which was more than enough. In fact, maybe colored it a little bit too much. And here I'm just being careful to ensure that the resin makes it only into those little waterways, trying not to get much onto the fur. If you do spill a little bit, you can wipe it off pretty easily, but you do want to have a pretty careful hand. And then to get out these little bubbles that you see in the resin after about 15 minutes, you go back and you take a lighter to them and you try not to do what I just did there, which is light your faux fur on fire, but it actually kind of gave a cool effect to the fur, so I wasn't too upset. And in fact, you'll see me here burn my faux fur again but use a lighter to get rid of the bubbles. They say you can breathe on top of the resin to get rid of it, but you don't want to breathe in the fumes from the resin and there's almost no way to do that if you're over it trying to pop bubbles with the CO2 from your breath. So I recommend it. don't breathe it in, use a lighter. You might want to be a little bit more careful than me, but it works even better and gets rid of all the bubbles in the resin. And then I gave it a day to dry, and now I'm going to go over it with some gloss Mod Podge to simulate little ripples, little uh, wind-blown waves on top of my little wetland here. So I'm just taking a brush, loading it up with the Mod Podge, and just going to town. All right, not worrying too much about overloading the uh, the area with the Mod Podge. It will dry clear. It might take a while, but it will dry clear, and it will look nice and glossy. And when the light hits it, it will look like water. So here we go. I've put a few Dark Age guys in here for all you historical fans. And as you can see, this looks like a few Saxon warriors trudging through a fen, maybe making an attack on some Britons, who knows. And I am happy with how this turned out. I, I think that I will be playing around with using faux fur more in scatter terrain. I really have only used it to make gaming mats. But again, I was, I was pleased how this turned out. I think it looks like a nice swamp that I'll be using for both 40k and for Saga and things of that nature. Hopefully you too learned something, got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did like it, please do subscribe, hit the like button down below, and I'll be back soon with some more videos. Take care.